in order for you to prevent recurrence, you have to change your lifestyle. So the your the risks now is removed entirely. A whole food plant based diet is the one that is prescribed for patients with colon cancer. Uh, because it has been shown, no, uh, when you take uh, pea pars liquid extracts, simply eat your pea pars can actually protect your bone marrow so that uh, your bone marrow somehow is preserved. In combination with the liquid extract, you still have to take the tablet since the tablet is the more complete uh, form of the of the pea pars. It's it's, uh, it's the food itself. It's the algae. It's the microalgae itself. All right, welcome. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us today again on another episode of Simply Healed. Today, we have again our very popular and much sought after Dr. Johnson. And the topic today, uh, Dr. Johnson spoke about breast cancer the last time on our program, and it was such an uplifting um, um, uh, seminar because uh, Dr. Johnson shared how you could basically almost 100% be treated uh, if you detect your breast cancer early. And today, he's going to bring us great news. Uh, we're going to talk about colorectal uh, cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, uh, colorectal cancer. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's welcome Dr. Johnson from Poly. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, Hello, Dr. everyone. Glad to be back. Yeah, how are you doing? How, uh, is, uh, is your clinic open during the pandemic already? Is, uh, is things back to usual right now? Uh, well, the clinic is open, but the, the things are, are still back to normal. No, uh, there's still so few patients coming in, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> I think patients are patients are afraid to go where other sick patients are right now. I think. Absolutely, yes, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's understandable. More, do you do more teleconsult now uh, during this pandemic season? Yeah. Uh, I do more teleconsults versus uh, seeing uh, patients in person. All right, so uh, stay stay tuned. You know, at the end, Dr. Johnson will actually uh, be able to answer your questions. And again, we can help you uh, arrange for a teleconsult with Dr. Johnson. All right, so, all right, Doc, we are, today we're going to talk about colon cancer. <laughs> yes. um, and it's really interesting. I, I, I looked at the information that you, you sent uh, us and it's, it's very interesting. Uh, I noticed mm -hmm. number one. First question, first question is, yeah. Colon cancer, prostate cancer, colorectal cancer. Uh, these terms, are they the same thing? Um, are they interchangeable when people say, I have colorectal cancer? Is it colon cancer? Is it prostate cancer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, these are different terms. No? Uh, when you say uh, colorectal cancer, the cancer is found anywhere along the colon, anywhere along the large intestine. So the large intes intestine composes of, the, of course, the, the whole colon, Plus the plus the rectum, the last part of the colon. So that is why it is called as uh, it is termed colorectal cancer. Okay, uh, prostate cancer. Prostate is different. It's a different organ entirely. <laughs> okay, so only males have prostates. <laughs> ah, okay. So it's a different organ. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. So, yeah. Okay, that, that that's good to clear up right now. And it's really interesting. You you showed me the epidemiology epidemiology of uh, colon cancer and it seems like uh, colon cancer is the third most diagnosed cancer in males and it's actually the second most commonly diagnosed cancer in females. Yes, uh, so this data was uh, published in 2018 uh, mm. by the International uh, Agency on uh, for Research on Cancer. You know, so uh, what they found that uh, colon cancer is the third most commonly diagnosed cancer in males worldwide. And it is second um, uh, in females also worldwide. So uh, on that year alone, 1.8 million new cases globally was, uh, was uh, diagnosed. And um, uh, 861,000 deaths actually were, were because of uh, colon cancer. So these numbers no, um, might uh, look big, but uh, of course these cases are are scattered all around the globe. So each country, each region has their own uh, incidence rates and mortality rates, all right? Mm -hmm. Wow, I, I was very surprised because every time we talk about colon cancer, I guess we are always thinking about the men who eat all the barbecue <laughs> and all the meat, you know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, last, last, time, last month we had breast cancer, so we thought this time colon cancer is for guys, but uh, guys. I was very surprised. <laughs> 
uh, it's, it's the second most common uh, cancer for females. Wow. Uh, Doc, before we even go any deeper, I, I think, mm -hmm. uh, so there are listeners right now, those who join us, um, when you are diagnosed with colon cancer, uh, do you, should you be afraid? I mean, you gave us good news the last time of breast cancer. Uh, what about colon cancer? H how dangerous is it? Should, should you lose so much sleep? Should you be panicking? Um, what's the rate of, uh, is it treatable? How, what's the survival rate? I mean, now just up front, you know. Uh, up front. Is oh, there any good news? When <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know what good news you can have in your diagnosis with cancer, but cancer. Uh, yeah. but uh, colon cancer is one of the most treatable cancers the, uh, nowadays. No, so uh, the prognostic factors is actually good. If, wow. Yes, uh, if you get diagnosed early, of course. So if if it's late already, if it's a stage uh, stage mm -hmm. four when it already metastasizes to, to other parts of the body, then the, the survival rate really drastically decreases, just like all, eh, all other cancers. But the good news with colon cancer is that when it presents, it usually presents on the early to mid stages. When some symptoms of, colon, of uh, colorectal cancer is bleeding in your stool, right? Mm. So uh, once you get bleeding in your stool and then you are uh, growing thinner and thinner through the years, and then uh, you have alternating uh, constipation and diarrhea, then uh, probably you have uh, colon cancer. Uh, plus, of course, you have to, of course, you have to take in other fa risk factors into consideration if you have a family history of cancer, and if you are at least 50 years old, then you have to get to get uh, tested for screening. So colonoscopy is one of the screening tools that we use. So if mm. um, if the doctor sees that uh, okay. Um, we, I, I am seeing a polyp here. The, the doctor can just excise and take it out. If it's cancer, then you already got rid of the cancer since it's still a polyp, right? So yeah, uh, it's, it's very easy with uh, colon cancer. If it's diagnosed in the early stages, but of course, if, it, uh, if, if it's already in the, in the advanced stage, then you have to go for surgery, you have to go for chemotherapy, then you have to change your lifestyle as well, okay, for your... Uh, chances of survival to increase, right? But uh, so, yeah, the, the yeah. So we, we start off with good news, right? Uh, I'm, I'm so glad that we are assuring all our listeners today that mm -hmm. every time they tune in, is full of hope because last time they tuned in, we found out breast cancer be, can be very treatable. So today they yeah. tune in, they found out that uh, if you have, if you're diagnosed with colon cancer, most likely, most likely it's in the early stages. And because it's in the early stages, it's also very treatable. And Doc, am I right yeah. to say that uh, colon cancer is one of the slowest growing cancer as well? Uh, it depends on what type of uh, colon cancer you have. So mm. we have a lot of types. No? So, wow. Uh, yeah, I didn't know yeah we have a lot, a lot of types. So it starts out as a precancerous lesion. Mm. So it's just a, a polyp there in, your, okay. in, in the line of the colon. No? Mm. So we have uh, also three types of uh, polyps. So the first type being adenomas. Uh, so an, 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 an adenomatous polyp is a precancerous, uh, is a precancerous uh, polyp. So uh, okay. when uh, when the doctor usually detects this kind of uh, polyp in your colon, then you have to still undergo uh, uh, further uh, testing, uh, biopsies, and uh, testing if it already spread or not. So. But these are the precancerous ones, adenomatous polyp. So another uh, kind of polyp that is also a precancerous uh, uh, lesion is sesalcellated polyp. So these terms are actually just based on the shape of the polyp. Okay, so adenomatous means in glandular. So the polyp is shaped like a gland. Okay, ah, okay so that's okay. just it. Okay, so as you can see in the picture, um, for sesalcellated polyps. Um, hmm. By 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 its name, no, uh, serrated, meaning the shape of the polyp is actually uh, yeah, uh, an irregular shape, but it's flat. All right, so that's also mm -hmm. one of the one of uh, pre a precancerous uh, uh, lesion. All right, so this type of polyp is also treated as an adenoma, okay? Because it's all uh, this type of polyp is, has all, is also high risk for colorectal cancer. So another one is a, benign, is a more benign one. No? It's a hyperplastic polyp. It's an inflammatory polyp. Okay. So uh, most of the the polyps that 
a doctor gets or excises in during a colonoscopy is a hyperplastic polyp. Okay, so this is benign, so you don't have to worry anything about this. So it's just an out, it's a, a, a polyp there in your colon. Yeah. But uh, of yes, course, uh, uh, it doesn't mean that it's benign that it cannot undergo a malignant transformation. So these types of uh, polyps can actually turn into a malignancy. Okay, so there is still that possibility. So that's why the doctor still has to remove this. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so basically, now, if you have yeah. polyps in your colon and detected, the safest thing is to surgically remove it? Yeah, remove it. Just remove it outright. Right. Yeah. So this one doesn't polyp, affect yeah. the function of your colon at all. It's not like removing your gall bladder or remove. So it's not removing an organ. It's just cutting out uh, excess growth. Yeah, it's just cutting out the sort of like an excess skin. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. So mm -hmm. wow, that that's great. So, that's great. So yeah. there's no need for extra consideration whether you should go for uh, to get it removed. Uh, another common question that I think people who are wondering if they have cancer, we always hear: is this a, is this true or not? That when you go for surgery on a on a let's say a cancer tumor, just because you go for the surgery, there's a chance that you cause the cancer cells to spread because you, you cut it. Is, is that is there any truth in that? Uh, it's true. But uh, it depends on what type of cancer. No, uh, mm. During a surgery, as much as possible, the surgeon tries to remove the, the, the tumor and block. So meaning by end block, meaning that the, the surgeon tries to remove the tumor with its border intact. So mm. that Fragments of the tumor doesn't go go doesn't spread or go somewhere somewhere else because during during uh, during a procedure, um, of course there there's some manipulation of the organ so there is that possibility, but uh, as much as possible the surgeon tries to remove it uh, along with the border so does it uh, some fragments of the tumor doesn't go somewhere else. So, so basically, the surgeon will cut cut out extra. Even they will cut out the tumor together with some uh, yes. some uh, non non cancerous uh, tissue, so that the yes. tumor is totally separated. It's not ruptured. It's not burst. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, so that is how surgeons do it. So uh, they call it uh, margins. You no, know, some depending on the depending on the extent of the tumor, the size, the staging, uh, they do have some margins for it. Wow. All right. So mm -hmm. choosing a good surgeon is, is important then. Yeah, of course. Of course. But uh, of <laughs> course, uh, we have to also uh, take into consideration, keep in mind that, uh, yeah, you have to be informed that during during the surgery, there's also that risk that some fragments of the tumor can can uh, can uh, dislodge and go some, somewhere else. So there's that uh, risk for metastasis. That is why after surgery, most of the doctors uh, prescribe uh, chemotherapy, so uh, they eradicate all the the, the cancer cells. Okay? Uh, so it's you know when I first heard about this uh, because you know uh, since we are a, a net we a lot of our clients and patients also want natural uh, way to, to treat cancer. Yeah. Uh, when I first heard about preventive chemotherapy, that sounds just weird. Like like why would you take extra chemotherapy? You know, I thought you just want to have as little chemotherapy as possible. So, so many times mm -hmm. chemotherapy is prescribed as a, it, uh, as a backup or fail safe, right? Just in case there are cancer cells that are roaming around, uh, maybe yes. one or two cycles will remove, kill these small cancer cells. Yes, yes. So oh, that's right. uh, one of the reasons why uh, the prescribed adjuvant chemotherapy for colon cancer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So, you know, thank, thank you, Doc. You know, because I think many times uh, our listeners, actually, when they meet their oncologist, uh, they, are, they are so shocked about the news, they don't know what questions to ask. Mm -hmm. So now in a comfortable seminar uh, environment, uh, these questions, maybe now all these questions come to their mind. Uh, but, but Doc, you were about to say uh, <laughs> uh, the different types of uh, colorectal cancer. But I want to yeah. ask one thing first, though. Um, what would cause a benign tumor, right, to become malignant? Is there any particular uh, thing that we should watch out for? Uh, because some people mm. are very prone to having polyps in their system. Uh, yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. So, 
if they cut it out, then like three years later, another one grows. So they keep going mm -hmm. for surgery. But let's mm -hmm. say if they don't want to keep cutting open their, their, their stomach, uh, I mean their, their, their body, uh, what do they, what can they do to prevent benign tumors from becoming malignant? So uh, before I answer that uh, question, we have to uh, take, into consider take into consideration the risk factors for developing colon cancer. So mm -hmm. some of these uh, risk factors is genes. If you have someone in your family who has uh, uh, colon cancer, then you are at risk of getting one as well in your lifetime. No? Number two uh, is a personal history of polyps. If you are someone who keeps on developing these uh, colonic polyps, then by just developing these polyps, then you're at risk of developing uh, colon cancer as well. If you have inflammatory bowel disease, if you have a previous radiation therapy in your abdomen, so that is also a risk factor because radiation, of course, is a double-edged sword. It can treat cancer, but at the same time, it can also cause cancer, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, your race, your gender, your sex and age are also uh, one of the risk factors, all right? So, uh, colon cancer is more common in men than in females. And of course, uh, with age, once you reach 50, then your risk for developing colon cancer uh, goes up. All right. So is that just, an, it's just that, an, is that just a natural thing? I mean, uh, is that just part of growing old? Or is it something that is because of our modern day lifestyle? I mean, I uh, it's just part of getting old. Age is really one of the major risk factors for cancer and all cancers uh, increases in incidence when you reach, when you go past the middle age. So when you go, when you reach 50s and above. So that is the time when uh, incidence of all different types of cancers go up. Okay. Um, it's because of the DNA damage as you age. Okay. So of course, uh, the free radicals, if the free radical, if you get uh, exposed to free radicals and there isn't enough antioxidants to counteract the free radicals, then these free radicals damages the DNA. So when the DNA gets damaged, and of course it will repair, there are repair mechanisms for that. However, if, if, the, if the DNA keeps, keeps on getting damaged at some point, there will, be, there will be a mutation. When a mutation occurs, uh, some of the mechanisms that suppresses tumor progression and the uh, Two more um, tumor suppressor genes and the oncogenes are will be will be uh, oncogenes will be stimulated. Tumor suppressor genes will be uh, suppressed. Then you'll have uh, uh, uncontrolled proliferation of the of cell growth. So then you get uh, cancer. Oh so wow! That, that that is the reason. It's just age. It's just the way things are. So. There are also certain uh, lifestyle factors, lifestyle... Uh, because I was about to say, if, yeah. <laughs> if you say that it's age, I think a lot of listeners will say, oh, okay, then it's nonsense. I can eat whatever I want because anyway, I get <laughs> the cancer case because of old age. <laughs> but it's not, it's not just that. <laughs> no, no, it's not just that. It's not just that. No, okay. so, but uh, yeah, uh, there are certain lifestyle factors that you can do to prolong that. To reduce your risk of uh, of developing uh, colon cancer, no, of course, mm -hmm. uh, when we are saying that uh, risk, when you're talking about risks, risks are probabilities. So it's still not a hundred percent that you won't get it, but uh, your chances of uh, that your chances of getting it, you can lower it as much as possible. So that, if you if that can give you a fighting chance, why not, right? <laughs> so what are some of the lifestyle uh, causes of? Uh... Of developing colon cancer, okay, you need to go on and to avoid. All right. So the number one risk factor is obesity. Second is that is having diabetes mellitus and insulin resistance. If you are eating red meat and processed meat, then those are carcinogenic. Then your risk for developing colon cancer also increases. Remember, these are food, and these foods are toxic, and the and these foods pass by the colon. All right. So. That is why uh, these you're, you have you really have to take care of your colon because uh, what you eat has the most influence <laughs> whether or not you get colon cancer or, or not. So next is uh, tobacco use. If you are smoking, well, this is already widely accepted that uh, smoking can cause cancer. At the same time, alcohol use. If you are drinking alcohol, that can also uh, cause uh, colon cancer. Some uh, other. Uh, 
uh, you can say uh, a pre-existing pre illness that can increase your risk for colon cancer is coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease and type 2 diabetes, no? Why? Because mm. these two conditions uh, brings your body into a high, very high inflammation, a very high inflammatory condition. So that is why. Okay. So, so I, it, actually, yeah. I, I saw a pathology uh, chart once. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm just going to flash it up right now. Mm -hmm. So it actually shows that actually all the cancer that we're having right now actually starts from our diet. Uh, that it, it is linked to so diabetes, high blood cholesterol, all these that's actually the foundation to developing cancer down the road. Um, and it seems like if you can avoid that, you actually lower your risk of getting cancer uh, dramatically. Yeah, if you can change it, no, well, we can control what we are eating, right? <laughs> yeah, so, correct, we can. So we, act, we can actually have uh, control in whether or not we get cancer or not. So it's entirely up to, it's entirely up to you. Yeah. So no, I also noticed that uh, antibiotic use, uh, constant use of antibiotics can actually lead to developing colon cancer. Yes. Uh, that, that would explain why women also get colon cancer. I, I mean, my sister is a uh, hy hypochondriac. <laughs> she, she carries like, I don't know how many types of antibiotics in her cabinet. You know, so I, I used to get so angry with her because every time my niece and nephew has a little something, they, they take antibiotics. And I'm like, you know, come on, let, let your immune system work a little before you... Yeah. you <laughs> Correct, but uh, that's an irresponsible use of antibiotics. No, she get yeah, antibiotics that's true, right? Yeah, but she does. She does finish the entire uh, what's that called? Uh, fourteen days. Yeah, but she does like she knows all the antibiotics by name. I'm like, wow. <laughs> she's not a doctor, right? She works in a bank, but yet she knows all these antibiotics by name. Wow. Uh, yeah, but you you said here that actually prolonged antibiotic use mm. can actually uh, create problems yeah. and develop. Uh, it's because your gut bacteria also has a very big influence on the ecology of the gut microbiome of the, or the gut ecosystem. No, so your probiotics actually secretes butyrate. So butyrate is a, is a substance that is anti-inflammatory and uh, anti-neoplastic, meaning anti-cancer. So butyrate, so these good bacteria thrive when you have a high fiber diet. If the opposite happens, if you have, if you have a diet that is very high in animal protein, these good bacteria, the population of these good bacteria decreases and the butyrate also decreases. That is why uh, you get to have an increase in uh, in risk of colon cancer when you eat red and processed meat. What if you destroy them with antibiotics? You don't get any butyrate at all because you already destroyed <laughs> the gut the bacteria inside the totally gone inside your colon. So, yes. So, so does that mean that uh, taking probiotics is now something that uh, in a modern day life we we should really look into because. It's quite common that we end up taking antibiotics maybe once a year. I mean, for the average person, right? If they get sick once a year from, from bacteria mm -hmm. infection. So is but, probiotics something that you would recommend? Probiotics, yes. It has some uh, benefit, especially for the immune system. It has some benefit. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, we have to rely as much as possible on natural means, no? So, natural means of getting Yeah, well. natural means, yes. So yeah. don't kill your gut microbiome just that easily, okay? So we have to protect so, so them. basically don't take antibiotics for every small little thing, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. Because that's that's going to also pro, uh, promote antibiotic resistance and that is very dangerous. So Doc, thank you. Uh, let's just summarize this part. Doc, you talked about the risk factors, the genes, mm -hmm. the history. If you have if you are polycystic, easily polycystic, I mean, you keep your event polyps, you, you are in danger. Uh, if mm. you have underlying uh, uh, metabolic syndromes, that yeah. is again something that you should be very concerned of. Coronary disease, diabetes. Yeah. I mean, diabetes is so common here in Philippines, right? Yeah. Yes. And don't just use antibiotics for every small thing, uh, especially your kids. Because I mean, if you if you use antibiotics on your kids for every small thing, and then they in their teenage years they use antibiotics for every small thing, when they grow up to be adults, they'll be using antibiotics all the time too. So uh, yeah. then you'll kill all your, your microbiome and you'll be at risk, I think, earlier than 50 to, to have mm -hmm. colon cancer. And the money yeah. you talk about sitting, you know, I, I found out that it's, um, during this pandemic, it, it has really affected my health. Uh, I was just walking up some stairs, 
go and buy food at some mall and I found that my knees are uh, ached a little. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, yes. yeah. I was like, that I'm only 40. My knees should not be aching, you know. Then I, I thought about, but I, I was not worried because I knew what exercises to do. I, mm. you know, I, I had a gym instructor before the pandemic. But it really struck me when I sat down and think about it. Wow, actually for the last eight months, what have I been doing? I haven't even been walking to the bus or the you yeah. know, transport. Really, it's sitting at home, eat, sit down, watch TV, work on the computer, sleep, eat. Oh my God, uh, no wonder even my knee started to hurt. So yeah, this, this yeah. sitting down thing is, is really dangerous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really dangerous. Uh, right. So Doc, right now, can we go into, for, for those of us who, who are diagnosed with cancer, uh, can we better understand what is a stage one, what's a stage two? What's stage three and stage mm-hmm. four cancer? Okay, so let's go for uh, staging. So, okay, so the stage of colorectal cancer is dependent on the depth of invasion of the tumor, the lymphatic involvement, and the spread to other organs. So the staging for colorectal cancer is complex. No, it's very complex. So I tried to simplify it. So what I'm going to present is uh, it's a, a very simplified version for you to understand it better, the progression, okay? So, but this is not what physicians are following. For proper staging, you still have to consult with your oncologist, all right? So uh, the first stage is stage zero. So what we mean by stage zero is carcinoma in situ. So meaning the cancer has not penetrated the inner layer of the colon or the mucosa. Okay. So uh, when we go for uh, when we go to stage one, meaning the cancer has already invaded the mucosa but has not yet spread to the nearby lymph nodes. Okay. So take note of that. Now when we go to stage two, the cancer has already grown through the wall of the colon. It may have may or may not have lymph node invasion, okay? You, you mentioned this lymph node. Uh, what is a lymph node? How important it is to a cancer patient? Mm. Okay, so the lymph nodes are, well, well uh, the lymph nodes is where your immune cells are developing, right? So uh, these nodes are... Are they all the over system. your body? Are they all yes. over your system? Mm. Yes, the most concentration of lymph nodes is in your colon. Why? Oh. Because the, the most surface area where the, the outside environment comes into contact with the inside of the environment is the colon. That is why your immune system is uh, very high in population over there. So they're concentrated oh, okay. there to fight off bacteria or whatever that is coming inside your, bod- inside your okay. body, inside All your right. mouth. So that is why. So colon cancer primarily spreads through number one lymphatic spread lymphatic spread so it spreads through the lymph nodes and number two it spreads through the blood vessels so that is how colon cancer spreads so but mainly more more commonly through the lymph nodes so okay, the so lymph that nodes is why, the yeah. lymph nodes are connected it's not an yes. iso- lymph nodes are not isolated they are part of a network Yes, they, they are part of a, of a network. So one lymph node is connected to another and to another by lymph vessels, by the lymphatic oh. vessels. So that's why when cancer cells invade the lymph node, they now have an expressway or a skyway to, or uh, ETSA to connect spread. to other parts. Yes, to spread right. and to so connect into That's, to that's when it moves yeah. into a stage, to, to a higher staging. A higher stage, yes. So that is how the cancer spreads. So that is stage two, all right? So okay. when you go, for, go to stage three, so the cancer has already grown through the wall of the colon. Number one, you have already a lymph node invasion and it may have spread to the nearby tissues or, or, or organs. So it already has some involvement of the, of the omentum, uh, probably some of the uh, abdominal wall, cavity. Yeah. So mm. that is the stage three. Uh, it has involvement of the nearby organs. Now, when you, get, when you go to stage four, so this is where it gets... Uh, Tricky. All right. So mo- uh, most commonly, uh, what we know, if it's a stage four, then you have uh, involvement of the other of the, or, or the distant organs already. Like, for example, the liver, the lungs, the brain, or, or the other parts of the body. All right. But in colorectal cancer staging, the cancer may or may not have grown through the wall of the colon. So you can have something that has not penetrated the wall of the colon, and yet you have distant metastasis that that is stage four okay lymph nodes you may or may not also have lymph node invasion okay so um you can have 
you can be diagnosed with, with stage four colon cancer even when your the tumor doesn't is not yet does uh, is not yet penetrating has not yet penetrated the wall of the colon you have no uh, lymph node invasion but you have a distant metastasis so uh, that is already stage four as well okay for for the easy understanding of our listeners mm -hmm. uh, stage one do people die of colon cancer or any cancer when they're in stage one or two do you uh, no that... oh no. no so okay no, so they don't die so yeah wait, you don't die oh wow uh to all the cancer patients out there and to the families i know you know every time we hear oh cancer dead you know no uh if you are in stage one stage two cancer there is uh, no mortality you, you don't actually mm. die so is there a way to not be cured of cancer but sort of like keep the cancer in stage one and stage two for a long time? Uh, there are <laughs> cases that uh, when the, the cancer can stay like that for a very long time. Um, of, but of course, you have to remove it as well because mm. if it's cancer there, then it's still growing uh, uh, unrestricted. So it can block your, your colon. So you, can, you will get constipation and blood in your stool. It's very All painful. Right. You, get, you can get abdominal pain with that. So you still have to get it removed. What causes uh, cancer to go from stage two to stage three? Um, is this something that we do or is it a natural progression? Is there anything we can do to halt it, to reverse it? Um, uh, yeah. Well, it's, a, it's, it's the natural progression of cancer. So that is right. how colon cancer grows and spreads through the body. So what can we, can we do something to halt the progression? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Lifestyle factors, the food you eat still has a lot of influence. But of course, uh, like I said, we have uh, our bodies are very different, of course. So we cannot rely on just one uh, modality or natural therapy or food therapy. Well, of course, it, eating healthily does a lot of things that, that does a lot of benefit to your body. But we cannot, you cannot rely on on only eating healthily to solve your can to solve cancer. You have to get it removed. You have to get uh, chemotherapy. Okay, you have to do everything that you can because you can never know. <laughs> mm. Wow, I think this is a uh, very encouraging and also very instructional to all our uh, uh, listeners out there. I mean, uh, Dr. Johnson himself is a lifestyle doctor. So if there's any any a proponent or any doctor who appreciates uh, natural healing and, and lifestyle changes to treat illness, uh, it will be Dr. Johnson. But I'm glad that Dr. Johnson also shared uh, just just now that you know take listen to your oncologist, observe uh, his recommendations, think through it. Uh, chemotherapy is a um, is a real treatment protocol. It's not been around for five years. It's been around for mm -hmm. decades, and they have been improving it over the years. But Dr. Johnson, we have good news, right? If if a patient actually has to go for chemotherapy. Uh, mm -hmm. You can actually help protect them through lifestyle uh, changes and also like through Simply Nature Peepers, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, like, just by doing, just by eating, right? No, uh, you can, of course, you have cancer. So there's, there, before you get cancer, there was something wrong in your lifestyle. That's why you got cancer in the first place. Mm -hmm. Now you get treated. Yes, the tumor was removed. You underwent chemotherapy. Everything was done perfectly. Now you are in remission but your lifestyle did not change, that cancer will come back because they did not remove entirely your colon. You still have your colon, okay? They only remove a portion, okay? So you can have recurrence. Now, in order for you to prevent recurrence, you have to change your lifestyle. So the, your, the risks now is removed entirely and you have all those uh, uh, cancer protective uh, lifestyle changes that you already did. So some of the these uh, lifestyle changes that you can do is to eat a whole food that based a whole food that based diet you have to exercise okay those are number one fiber intake is equivalent to is, is a, has a lot of protective uh, uh, effect on your risk for developing colon cancer you have to have a high fiber intake a high fiber diet okay you have to and, go for exercise as well. and not if you eat yeah. whole, uh, if you eat plant-based whole foods, you will naturally get quite a lot of fiber, right? Yes. So that's By another itself, reason. Yes. We... That's another reason. That <laughs> is why uh, yeah. a whole food plant-based diet is the one that is prescribed for patients with colon cancer. 
Because uh, it's no. the most effective diet. Yeah. No, the last time I you you talked about lifestyle changes, uh, I did ask you on behalf of so many of our listeners. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's so hard to become a vegetarian or vegan. Right? It's so hard. It's so hard. I, I was successful for one month and then on oh. one deal, I slipped up and then the next thing you know, I yeah. slipped all the way, right? Yeah, uh, it's so hard. But it, it, again, because I've done it before, it's also not as difficult to go back on it, uh, yeah. to adjust my life. No, but, but I did ask you and you did say that if it's so difficult, one of the first steps that we can do is to mm. become a pescatarian. Is it a pescatarian? Uh, that means eating vegetables and fish, a, right? A little bit of fish, yes, yes. Then yeah. and you that would that, be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really you okay. said that, that will actually achieve like a great, a great, uh, great change in your in your risk factors for cancer yes. already, right? Uh, because uh, when they compared the uh, uh, they, when they did the population study, you know, the Adventist Health <laughs> two study, uh, they found that that for overall uh, mortality for the overall risk for all cause mortalities, that means from dying from anything the vegans actually have the lowest risk. So if you are total vegetarian, the next um, dietary pattern that is close to what um, a total vegetarian is, is the pescatarians. Yeah, but uh, I, I'm adv- I also advise that uh, if you are going to eat fish, just eat a small portion of it, not the entire fish. Moderation. Before the day. Yes, in moderation yeah. still. You still have to... Not, not have the whole a fish. <laughs> Still have a predominantly plant-based diet as uh, still, yeah. So now, uh, so these are the things that you can do to 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 prevent recurrence. Of course, now during chemotherapy, there are of course it's very uncomfortable. There are a lot of side effects. Now it's also very important for you to boost your immune system since your 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 gut is where the, the is where majority of the immune system is, right? So you have to protect it. Now. Uh, simply nature peepers have been shown to protect the bone marrow. So the bone marrow is where the uh, the white blood cells um, grows, right? So the white blood cell precursors, so to speak, the white blood cell babies are. So it is where it is. Uh, they're growing inside the bone marrow. Now, when you destroy the bone marrow, it's one of the side effects of oxaliplatin. So when your immune system decreases. Now, simply nature peepers can actually protect your bone marrow so that yeah. um, your bone marrow somehow is preserved. So your immune system doesn't go down uh, drastically. And of course, uh, when you undergo chemotherapy, one, one of the side effects is fatigue. Mm. You, know, you are really tired all day after chemotherapy. You cannot move, you just want to, you just want to stay in your house, you cannot work. But uh, simply nature peepers can address that uh, that fatigue, so you can continue to work and live your life. Of course, if you are feeding a family, you cannot afford to to rest, right? So you have to. So it's yeah. something that you can yeah. can have yeah, yeah. for you to be able to continue your life. Mm, wow, uh, that's right. Um, just to add on to what Dr. Johnson just shared, here's a slide. Uh, what Dr. Johnson is talking about. So it shows that when you are actually going for chemotherapy and on oxaliplatin, which is specifically the chemotherapy drug that you'll be using for colon cancer, uh, you don't lose weight and your bone marrow cells are protected. Not only are your bone marrow cells protected, even your spleen is protected. And and your spleen is where your body stores the immune cells before being released into the system. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, doc, would you say that for a chemo patient, um, I guess simply nature PIVA extracts will be the best complementary thing to support them through chemotherapy so that they will actually have very little side effects and that they will have a strong recovery after that? Yeah, uh, because it has been shown, no, uh, when you take uh, PPARS liquid extracts, when the extracts is the highest, it's the, mo- it's the most potent uh, the concentration of uh, PPARS. So it has a dose-dependent uh, effect. So meaning mm-hmm. dose-dependent, the higher the dose, the, the more protection that you can get from it. So, of course, you have to take the liquid extract since it's the most potent one. It has the highest yeah. concentration. So, that's it. Yeah. But, uh, of course, uh, in combination with the liquid extract, you still have to take the tablet since the tablet is the more complete uh, form of the of the PPAR mm. since it's, uh, it's mm-hmm. the food itself. It's the algae. It's the microalgae itself. So, you need to have other the other components of the algae for the whole thing to work. So, not just the extract. So, that's why you need the the tablets as well. 
you know, uh, for all the listeners out there, we already have amazing testimonies. Just go to Simply Nature's YouTube channel. You can find uh, one of them is uh, Mr. Low. He's actually a fourth stage colon cancer. And he went, as, as Dr. Johnson uh, prescribes, he went for colonoscopy and then he went for, he had surgery. He had part of his colon removed. And after that, it had spread to the liver. In fact, his colon cancer had spread to the liver. He also removed uh, almost half of his liver as well. Uh, but he was on the PIPA extract throughout this whole process. And he said, uh, he, he actually shared that through chemotherapy, his white hair was dropping and black hair was growing. So was during well. chemo, <laughs> during well. chemo, right? His <laughs> white hair dropping and his black hair growing. So, and then he recovered very quickly. And that was mm. almost five years ago. Today, he's still cancer-free, uh, very oh. strong, doing well. And uh, Doc Johnson, we actually have a, one of the doctors that I, I think you, you actually know. Um, but I can't share his name right now uh, because his, his family member actually uh, is experienced a uh, late stage colon cancer and is an elderly gentleman. So mm -hmm. uh, he went on our liquid extract and then maintained with the soft gel. And uh, he was very surprised because he was afraid that his brother would not want to take uh, the liquid. But when he took the liquid and went for oxaliplatin uh, chemotherapy, yeah. mm -hmm. he felt good. He actually felt very little side effects. And because of that, he continued taking the, the extracts mm -hmm. throughout his chemo. So exactly as you prescribed, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Johnson, I think it's a great, great uh, treatment for all the cancer patients out there. Yeah. All right, Doc. So, uh, I mean, we, we, you have shared with us uh, what colon cancer is. It's, it's great. Don't need to worry about it. You know, it's, if you are diagnosed with it, it's probably early stages. And early stages means successful treatment. Yeah. Right? Dr. Johnson said that just go and see your, your doctor. You probably do a, a colonoscopy to, to confirm and uh, to get the staging. And if you go for surgery, get it removed. Right? Get it removed and then... Um, do the preventive chemotherapy and Dr. Johnson gave us a clear understanding because even in the surgery, you, you never know if, if some of the cancer cells were sort of like uh, displaced. And so you just go for a, a short, short, not the full, full blown cycles, just a few one, two short cycles and just to, to kill all the cancer cells uh, that could possibly be in your body already. And uh, to do that, take simply nature preparers to protect yourself through that process so that your immune system stays intact, you don't have any fatigue, you can go continue to work so that you can pay the medical bills, <laughs> right? <laughs> your family needs us, especially after this pandemic, right? All our savings is drained. Um, yeah, and, and, and after that, lifestyle changes. Uh, learn to eat healthy. For that, you can throughout the whole process, if you are mm -hmm. going for surgery, if you're going for chemotherapy, make an appointment with Dr. Johnson. All right, he will be the right person to support you through that process. All right, and uh, we work with oncologists as well, so no worries. You know, Dr. Johnson is not afraid to speak to your oncologist. All right, so they can work together to help you get, get strong, get through your entire treatment successfully. Good news is colon cancer early to diagnose, always most often early stages, and it's very, very treatable. You know, thank you, doc. Uh, for that wonderful sharing. And I know everybody has lots of questions right now. We had the same thing the last time. So we would uh, want to move quickly to our Q&A and you can ask all your questions because our wonderful Dr. Jensen will be online now to answer your questions. But before we go, Doc, um, do you have any uh, advice, last words, uh, or instructions <laughs> to our cancer patients before they ask you any detailed questions? Uh Okay, so again, let, like what I have been uh, saying uh, to the previous uh, webinar and to all my patients, you have to take action, okay? It's not yeah. enough that when you feel something wrong in your body, then you uh, leave it that way. You have to go seek a medical professional, okay? You have to go seek uh, a, a doctor, your doctor, okay? So don't be afraid of what the results may turn out to be because it may turn out to be something that is curable okay so don't uh, don't be afraid to seek um, medical guidance uh, sayang sayang naman if the, if you don't get treated when it it can be treated right 
di ba? Yeah. Sayang eh. If you can add more, if you can add more, probably add more 10 years in your life, if you get treated, when when you did not get treated, when you left it alone, then it was cut short. So those lives, uh, those those time, those added years is uh, something that you cannot, uh, of course, get back. Okay? Yeah. So you have to take action. Okay? So, so take so, action. <laughs> yeah. Take action. Take action. And you can start your action now by asking questions because Dr. Thompson <laughs> yes. is here online. So yes. Doc, uh, before we go to the Q&A, thank you very much for your time. We look forward. Uh, the last time, so all our participants were so uh, thankful. They really enjoyed. They asked questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really want to thank you. And uh, I'm sure after this, uh, you'll be able to help so many patients here tonight as well. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for having me.